So, I mean, based on the indicator we got from the German GDP figures just moments ago and now from your survey as well, uh, is the recovery stalling, would you say? Uh, I, I would say the recovery is more or less on track. Uh, so with the GDP figures are slightly better uh, than the ones we had a couple of weeks ago in the revision. And the uh, climate index, the business climate index, uh, continues to increase to recover. This time, it's not just the expectation. It's really the current situation that's improving. We are still far from normal. But the recovery, I would say, uh, is on track. What about the labor market? I mean, over the summer, tens of thousands of jobs have been cut. Is that going to continue? Yes, uh, I'm afraid we'll continue to see job cuts. We've, uh, we, we do see a lot of short-term work still going on. So a large part of, of, of the company, it's roughly 40 percent, uh, still on short-term work. Uh, so we see that, that we, we aren't back to normal yet. But uh, we, the things are improving. So they are improving slowly, but they are improving. I mean, you mentioned the short-term work and this uh, concept of the Kurzarbeit. Are you an advocate for it? Does that need to get extended, in your view? Uh, I think it is a good instrument to deal with uh, short-term crisis. Now, extending it would mean we, uh, ex uh, we extend something that would last until March next year's year anyway. So I think it's too early to extend it. It's a good instrument, but there is a danger that in areas where we need structural change, where we need people to move to different jobs, we prevent that structural change. So it's really a trade-off. And the longer we uh, go on and the longer companies are on this Kurzarbeit, on this short-term work, the more likely it is they will have to change. So it's, uh, you know, it can fix certain things, but uh, we, I, I don't think we should have companies one and a half or two years on the short-term work scheme. From what you're seeing in the data, Clemens, should the ECB offer more stimulus as we go into the end of the year? And so sort of what kind of measures would really help sustain, I mean, what is clearly still a very fragile, very nascent uh, green shoots of an economic recovery, let me put it that way. Uh, I think we need to see that the German situation is better than the average situation in Europe. Uh, the European economy is suffering really from the difficulties with tourism, with travel. So um, it's a fragile situation. At the same time, I think it would be too early for the ECB to uh, enact further stimulus. I think we should uh, observe how the current measures work. Uh, and then see what's going on. There's a lot of stimulus in the economy. There is a lot of fiscal stimulus. I think what needs to happen now is the European recovery program. We need to get these, uh, the, the, these projects going. That's more important than more monetary stimulus, in my view. There's been a lot of back and forth in the press, Clemens, about whether or not the Schuldenbremse or the basically the break on, on some of the debt regulations should be continued. Uh, do you think that that rule should stay suspended going into next year? Uh, I'm afraid it has to be to remain suspended. There is no way in which we will return to a balanced budget in the federal, uh, at the federal level next year. So it will have to be suspended next year. And I'm not even sure we can get back to it in the year after that. At the same time, I think the signal is important that there is a strong commitment to fiscal solidity and consolidation in the medium term, but not now. There is no return to a balanced budget next year. So as we look forward, then, what should the priorities be for the government in terms of bringing together the right tools for a fiscal package to, to really sustain some of what you're talking about? Again, a lot of fiscal stimulus has been decided. The challenge now is to make sure it really happens. So deciding fiscal stimulus programs is one thing, but really getting them to go is another. Getting public investment to be realized is a challenge because there are so many bureaucratic procedures. We have to make sure that uh, these things really happen. There is a danger that the public investments that have, you know, where we have the money ready now, that they happen in two or three years from now when the crisis is over. So 
I think at the moment it's more a question of implementation. The other thing is we need to make sure that we do not have to return to a general lockdown. We see infection numbers rising everywhere at the moment, and that is a challenge. It can be handled if we, uh, we, we act decisively when there are local outbreaks. But what shouldn't happen is another general lockdown. We need to avoid that. I mean, one of the tools that have been implemented is the suspension of some of the insolvency filings uh, that may make a lot of sense in terms of trying to fast track some of the bureaucracy. But at the end of the day, you also run the risk of creating zombie companies, not just a few, but a lot of them. Uh, is that something you're beginning to think about as well? Uh, absolutely. That's a tricky, tricky question. So I think it was right to suspend this because we don't want to want courts and, and other institutions to be overburdened with insolvencies. At the same time, there is a danger that they get overburdened one, once we, we get back to the old rules. So I think it's now time to think about new procedures, possibly, to facilitate the restructuring of some companies, for instance, um, creditors agreeing on, on, on a haircut. Uh, and things like that. So we need, I, I think that the rules should remain suspended for a couple of months, but at the same time, we need to think about new procedures uh, making this entire insolvency process more efficient and quicker.